With about a 1% vacancy rate for rentals, finding housing in Jackson County is tricky for anyone right now. But for those dealing with mental illness, it can be especially difficult. That's just one of the many struggles that Compass House and partnerships in community living deal with every day. When we talk about Clubhouse, we talk about a community, and that's what we are. Matt Vorderstrass is the executive director at Compass House in Medford. While this is his place of work, these aren't clients, they're friends. Everybody has three basic needs of being loved, needed, and wanted. And that is what the Clubhouse is here to provide. They opened their doors in August of last year and are based on a successful model of psychosocial rehabilitation. We exist to provide purposeful opportunities that help advance the, the well-being of the individual and the well-being of the community. A simple and straightforward mission with life-changing effects. Allowing members the opportunity to um, use their skills and talents to not only help the Clubhouse keep growing and, um, and surviving and thriving, but also to help our members move forward in their lives. Here, members come to socialize, help with tasks in the office, and share meals. In a place where members are genuinely wanted and accepted for who they are. And maybe, if only for a moment, they're able to forget their struggles. But even in a relaxed, come-as-you-are environment like this one, hardships do come up, and they're also found in Grants Pass. Housing is a huge issue. Joanne Furman is the Associate Director of Partnerships in Community, or PCL. They offer services ranging from behavioral to employment for people living with mental disorders. Our job is really to help people um, find what it takes to make them happy. And according to Furman, finding suitable housing can be especially challenging with a mental illness, partly because of affordability, but also for other reasons. I think housing laws will say you can't discriminate, right? I think people still sort of experience a little bit of, of that. Landlords are able to choose applicants that, have, that present the least amount of risk, which oftentimes, unfortunately, are not individuals that, have, that are living with mental illness. Vorderstrauss says the state has recognized the housing challenge and is set to offer $20 million to be shared among housing efforts for the mentally ill and substance abusers. It f makes it feel like the state is actually paying attention, that the state realizes that this is a uh, statewide issue. PCL owns eight homes in Oregon to be used specifically for people dealing with mental illness, but none of those are in southern Oregon. Instead, locally, they help clients find welcoming places to rent and often employ staff to live along with them. This setup often means clients live together, but Furman shies away from the term group housing. When we talk about group home, pe people think about sort of people being isolated and not parts of their community. They live in homes like the rest of us and sometimes with other people. It's a stigma Furman wants to help shake. We, we want to put people in these little boxes. It's about getting to know people for who they are. Tomorrow in part three of this exclusive report, we'll meet a man who's benefiting from these types of services. He'll explain how he went from living in a group home to getting a job and living a more independent lifestyle. In studio, Taylor Ryan, NBC5 News.